All right. Somebody told me I should start with the presentation, and it looks like it's already two minutes late, so it's, it should be a standard Portuguese delay, two minutes, right? <laughs> no, there should be more. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very fair, um, very unbiased, and very polite presentation, which is called Fast Calculation with Big Amounts of Data. Um, on the good uh, relational platform. So before I introduce myself, I would like you to introduce yourself. So in order for me to speak to people, I want to understand, do you speak English? Yeah, good. I was watching the last presentation, most of the people were, Ruth was asking the question and people were like, I'm not talking before my first coffee. So I need a little bit more reaction, okay? Um, who are developers, like .NET, Java, whatever, just raise your hand, okay? What about system administrators? One, okay. What about the people who didn't raise uh, their hand, they still need coffee? Uh, yeah, okay, okay, that's a fair point. I do need coffee as well, but I shouldn't be taking before my presentation. All right. Okay, good. Um, who works with uh, databases here? Raise your hand. Okay, good. Um, who works with relational databases? Hey, party time. Okay, I'm going to enjoy this. Um, who likes working with relational databases? Okay, okay. 60, 70% of the people. Okay, who likes NoSQL? Yeah, very cool. Who knows what NoSQL is? <laughs> okay, this is going to be funny. All right, good. So I don't know. I still ask myself questions. And please, um, th this is really like, I'm, right now it's probably the only phrase from the whole presentation you should be taking seriously. Uh, I'm not trying to offend anyone, really. It will look like, but I'm not. Good. All right, so my name is a typical Portuguese name because I'm kind of a Portuguese guy. It's Nico Neugebauer. I come from a very uh, distant city which is called Lisbon. Um, I describe myself as a data platform professional, which means I work with different data platforms, blah, blah, blah. I work for the company OH22, whatever, blah, 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 blah. All this stuff, not interesting. So I would like in this city, in this city, I would like to introduce myself. So this is the real me. Okay? It's, it's uh, in Portugal, it's one of the few cities when I can potentially get applause besides rotten apple when I declare my true identity. Anyway, so um, I like um, working with data, with different kinds of data. And so this presentation basically is to take a look at what a data is, what a big data, and what can you do on your traditional relational platform. Okay, so fast calculation with big amounts of data. Oh gosh, so many pictures, no, no pictures. But I will be famous, no. Okay, so who knows what a big data is? Okay, okay, interesting. Okay, but everybody heard of big data. It was like the marketing buzz before the artificial intelligence, the blockchain, all of this stuff. It was like everybody's doing big data, right? So. Is this big data? I think it's pretty big. I think it's really, really, it's five megabytes. I mean, take a look how many people, it's like, these are the real engineers, this guy, and these are all the managers, right? All around. And you see the relationship. So in a big, you know that a big data project is a project where you have more managers than the engineers. That's the first requirement. So. By the time this five megabyte drive was existing, it was a big data. So what would be the next big data like? Let's rewind for forward for 20 years. This would be a big data, really. The perfect cards. The huge amount of data that people, our parents would insert into the machines, it was absolutely awesome. And a lot of people like, would, you know, would roll the stacks of the perfect cards, and they're like, this is a big data. Who, do, who does agree with me? Oh, three, four, 
for five people. I, I, I'm, I'm winning the crowd. I'm starting. Okay, so this is a big data, right? You know, a lot of servers, right? Who agrees with me? No? Okay. Hey, seven, eight, nine people. Great. So the thing about the data is this. When I hear the term big data, I would like to change it. I would like to say it's not really big because big depends on the age. Whatever you say right now, I have a one petabyte of data. That's good for you. In 20 years, people are like, oh, do you need a couple of petabytes? I have a here a little drive. You can put it and store it and process it in a couple of seconds. So it's very relative. Whatever you call as a big amount of data, in 20 years, we'll be like, everybody's working with this amount of data. It doesn't really matter. And then the thing is, what is, are your companies looking in the data? Are they looking in the big amount of data? I don't think so. Are they looking in the information of the data? Not really. They're looking for the insight. And you can have like five petabytes of data, then you have 20 megabytes of information, really something which means something aggregated, analyzed, and then you have two rows of the inside, and then you discover that you have a, some old relational database where the same information is stored. Did it happen to anybody in the big data projects? No, never? Okay, good, just to me. So that's my basically impression about the big data, and I, I just really, um, I mentioned that blockchain, AI, I mean, they have their use, but how they are marketed, I, I don't like marketing, I'm sorry. If you enjoy it, it's a wrong session. There must be definitely a better session in the other room. So all this stuff, which is highly hyped up, it's like multi-master rights, like this is a brand new thing, nobody since 70s, no database, relational, non-relational, whatever, ever right, it's just absolutely, as long as you say globally distributed, it's the thing, right? Any entrepreneurs? No? Okay. No matter. So, NoSQL. Some of people said that they do understand what NoSQL is. I struggle. I struggle to understand uh, this concept. So, um, for me, NoSQL is the best thing ever, right? Because it's popular. Everybody's using NoSQL. Who is using NoSQL? Okay, so which kind of the NoSQL you use, guys are using? Hmm? Couchbase, cool. What else? React. Okay, what else? DynamoDB. Okay. Mongo. They are all NoSQL, right? Okay, good. Anyway, so I thought that a lot of people, I, I like your answer, but a lot of time what I hear people like, NoSQL is JSON. Right? And because I have a colleague in my company, and four years ago on the Christmas, I, make, I made a fatal mistake. I started talking to him about JSON. And he said, every developer should love JSON. Like, why? Hey, because if you change something, you don't care what happens next, right? If you need a new column, you just write the data. If you want to change the type of the data, you just change it. And nobody cares. It's all stored. It's just JSON. It's just a text file. Cool? Anybody work here in the 90s? 1990s? Okay. Ugh. We are very few old people here. No, you are new. I'm just a little bit old. So there was a thing for all of you new. You probably never heard. It's called XML. Right? So XML is the same thing as the JSON. Just the hype of the XML has gone away. And some people thought, and even build the databases based on XML. Like, whole database is just one XML. Who does here something which is called decision support or business intelligence? Do you care about the quality of your data? Sometimes. Don't you spend more than 80% of your time caring about just this little thing? Somebody just change a little data type? And, you know, I know that artificial intelligence will solve all the problem, but as long as the artificial intelligence struggles to join two columns 
One of them is a string 0, 1, and the other one is an integer of, uh, of the integer type with 1. I have a struggle of believing in the um, in uh, artificial intelligence. So for me, this is Jason, right? And this is Jason, and this is Jason, and this is Jason. And you know, the biggest Jason, the baddest Jason is this one. This one is definitely a Jason, right? This one is the Jason of, of them all. So please, I mean, I do understand more of the developers than they go like, I don't give a damn, I just write the data, other people will, will do something with this thing called data. Please remember a couple of slides ago, it was data information inside. If you put whatever, not that data lake, data swarm, if you put it, can I say word shitty? Oh, I'm in Porto, I can, right, so. If you put a shitty data, you get a shitty information and you get a kaga, um, shitty insight. And your, your bosses will not be very happy about this, right? So the freedom comes at a very high price, possibly of you getting fired and very well justified. So the brief history of NoSQL, and I know I'm bashing NoSQL, but I will show something cool, uh, on, not on NoSQL, maybe. All right, so how does the NoSQL start? It's like, it will be the best new thing. It's just like, it has nothing to do with SQL, right? Right? A couple of years later, people started switching on the brains. They said, why? Well, we see that just the thing we, oh, in XML file or in JSON file, it doesn't really work. It doesn't give you a performance on writes, on reads, in none of the cases. Um, well, no SQL stands actually for not only SQL. And that was a good idea. Who agrees with that? Yeah, cool. I love it. Good. So why would somebody start a message with a negative of negating? It's like, if you ask me, what is your name? I can tell you, my answer would be, I'm not Andre. Right? And then the next question, what is your name? I'm not Maria. Why do you, would you start with no SQL? And then the small thing about the SQL, SQL is a language. It's not an objective database, it's not a relational database. It's a language. And do you know what is the most popular language for the no SQL? It's SQL, right? I mean, I'm just like thinking through, logically through this thing, it's just like, wow, somebody spelled spent huge amount of mental cycles just thinking, how can I make fun of everybody? Right. In my point of view. Anyway, so some of the developers, they're just like, are you using a relational database? That's just one. These are not polite people. What would be a, a picture of a polite person? It would be like using relational, like, Oh, using relational. I mean, you will not be able to store the data fast, right? I would not be able to show you in under six minutes how I would produce and store um, one billion rows within the relational database. Just a small, you know, laptop sized computer, right? Right? Who believes that I am capable of doing under 10 minutes, one billion rows? Oh, that's good. I can do it actually with one core. And I'm not talking about specific. I will be showing SQL Server, but I guess if you go for Postgres, any other modern relational database, you can achieve pretty good results on the inserts and on reading as well. Anyway, so my favorite picture. I'm sorry if I offend anyone. Anytime I hear what about, how about NoSQL, I say, what about yes SQL? I declare myself as a SQL fan. So this is a more serious slide. It's basically how I view, and there is nothing like query processing objective. It's not a Gartner term or whatever. It's not official. It's, I, I was sitting there upstairs preparing, finishing my, I mean, of course I finished my presentation two weeks ago, but I was finishing my presentation and I was like, what new acronym can I create? So this is for me, what some of the things that really make sense. And I put it, relational OLTP. Who doesn't know what OLTP is? 
Okay, good. So OLTP is online transaction processing. It's basically any website. It's an operational store. So you basically you, ins you have thousands, maybe millions of connections which are inserting, modifying, and reading information at the same time, at a big scale, typically. I mean, maybe your big data relational OLTP will be 10 people, but it's still. They do it in parallel, and the transaction is very small. You just do it tiny of that. OLAP stands for online, uh, uh, online analytical processing. Basically, it's running aggregates in English, right? So you have a couple of millions of billions of rows within your database, and you do some sum, aggregation, count, whatever, some calculation over this amount of data. You group it, and you present it. I mean, some purists will thrash me, but who, who cares? Key pair value. Key pair value. Is this a non-relational concept? Who believes this? That key pair value is non-relational. So key, key and value are non-related, right? Uh, non-relational. Okay, good. But everybody understand that, right? So document store is basically you store the documents. Whatever the format of documents is, maybe different formats of the documents, whatever. So documents will never be related, right? Maybe somehow they have a hyper connection, hyper -liga -soy. Um, Well, they will be, who cares? So wide columnar. Anybody using wide columnar database? Yeah, one person. This is cool. So who is using graphs here? One person. Okay, what do you use for graphs? Near. Oh, cool. So I think it's, I mean, it's one of the most hyped areas, and I think it will be exporting pretty much. So if you're working with the data, in five to 10 years, everybody will be working with graphs. Because it's really, things you can do with graphs, it's, it's, it's really amazing. Unfortunately, most of the relational and, I mean, Neo4j and some others, they have uh, pretty good, uh, Anybody heard about Apache Tinkerpop? No? So if, if you're interested in the graphs, write it down, Apache Tinkerpop. It's a pretty good concept, open source. You can do the graphs with it. Okay, so text and RDF, which is basically entity attribute value. I mean, most of you developers, you should know what it is. Okay, so I have, what, 20 minutes? Good. Um, blah, blah, this is not interesting, you already know. Yeah, it's just because, you know, how big data is being sold. It's like everybody's doing, do you? And people are like, yes, we do. Okay? And please don't forget something GDPR thing. It, 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 it might sound funny. It's like, who heard about something which is called modern data warehouse? Nobody. So modern data warehouse is a dis distributed data warehouse. You have maybe a relational database in the center, and you have all around all possible sources, database. You have text files, you have uh, Hadoop, you have Spark, you know, multiple platforms, and you process the data. It's really cool, right? Do you guarantee the uh, security of your data and the transfer of your data between all of those platforms? You guarantee that this data will not be stolen and you will not have to report to the final users that their data is stolen as GDPR requires, right? So the moment you start taking the data out of one principal source after 25th of May, you are playing with GDPR, right? And all of these new platforms or open source platforms, they give you the highest security possible, right? They care about you. So OLTP versus OLAP. I will be showing just a couple of demos, but I'm not uh, talking about OLTP. Because OLTP, if it has a huge amount of data, nobody cares. You extract the data from OLTP, you put it into some source, and you analyze it there. Because if you have 20 billion rows, and the people are actively inserting data, you do not want to run aggregations over it. Modern platform, I mean, Oracle has some Interesting attempts, SAP HANA has some interesting attempts of doing this, but in the praxis, it's more marketing than the reality. None of them makes the aggregation query, uh, prevents the aggregation query from stopping of people writing into the database. 
and it's not the objective. So uh, basically, it's just what I mentioned. You have uh, things like the connection. Every time you open a new source, your best new thing, just think about a uh, new database, think, does this database guarantee the security of the data? When people are connecting, is somebody running a Wireshark and like laughing at you, extracting the data? Nobody of you ever was hacked, I know. It just happened to me a couple of weeks ago. So, um, yeah, are you encrypting the data? You move, I mentioned the multiple servers, and you know, who cares about the backup? You just backup the data, right? And you do not encrypt it. Just somebody takes it, they will not, never send you a message, right? So, um, the best excuse people are using to take data of one central platform is basically, it just for the analysis, I'll take it for four hours and then I will delete it. So my reaction is like, yeah, this is hilarious. It really is. You've never seen some Excel files like spreading over the networks or, you know, some important information. Just funny. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you something. I wanted to talk to you why the relational databases still have a kind of a pretty interesting game. First of all, it's because they still have pretty smart people behind them. Any company, Amazon, Oracle, Google, Microsoft, they have some of the smartest people. Some of the smartest people in the universities, some of the smartest people from the open source coming over and they spend a lot of money writing something. So I will show you the SQL Server, and I just want to ask who has heard about the batch execution mode? Just two people? Okay, good. So let me show you some, some basic, basic thing. I will go whatever, I'll take some database, I'll take some data, And I will show you how something which is called execution plan. On different platforms, it will look in a different way. But I, I just care about this one. So, one way or another, on Oracle, uh, on MySQL, on Progress, you mostly will not see the execution plans, you will see it in the textual form. So does, does anybody know how does this work? Anybody works with SQL Server here? Just a few of them. So do you know how this works? From left to right or from right to left? So it works from right to left. Is it? Okay. How do we read it? How do we read and analyze an execution plan? from right to left. How does it execute? From left to right. It starts here, select, it goes to sort, and then index scan, and on any platform, you will see these arrows. If this is small amount of data, it's small. And if it's big, big data, really big data, it will be really fast. So, if, imagine I have here a, a couple of thousand rows, so I will push the data, I will read the data, I will push it to sort, sort will, sort it, and select will return to the user. So this is how the relational platform works, right? Who, who, who agrees with me? Okay, who disagrees with me? Ha! Who is not sure when he or she has to raise their hand? Please raise your hand. Yes! Good. So what I told you is bullshit. This is total bullshit. So how does it work or work traditionally until six years ago? It was basically on the row by row model. So er, any programmer who does not know what a virtual function is? <laughs> Everybody, okay, good. So virtual function is basically, it's not correct, but it's kind of interface. So every single operator or iterator has to implement some interface. There are three functions in SQL Server concretely, every one of them has to implement. First of them, is start, the second is end, and the third one, get next row. So imagine I have here some data, whatever, seven rows, it's here. I have here a sort, so the real query 
which runs on the relational platform will go like, we issue the query, then select, begin. Do I have the data? No, not yet. Get next row. Sort, begin. Do I have the data? No. Get next row. Class read index scan. Woo, begin. How many rows does the sort ask? Just one. Good. I'll give him one row. Sort receives the information, starts a woo. I will sort it, and then I will pass it. Oh, I cannot pass any data because I have to pass it in order. I have to wait until all the data comes to me through. So get next row, okay. Get next row, okay. And it will carry on for thousands, for millions of rows until he says get next row and the cluster in the next scans gate goes, sorry man, I'm done, end. And this guy sort, he will pre-sort, reorder, and then delivers the row to the select, right? No. How many rows does select ask? One row. Get next row, get next row, get next row, and then the user gets the data. Does it sound like an effective way? No. It's pretty shitty. So six years ago, and actually much earlier, Microsoft in their platform and Actually, they put that code into Hive, in the patch Hive, some of their code for the open source. They implemented something which is called patch mode. So what is patch mode? I call it a special one. You can see them pretty old, right? Um, so patch mode, it's a new model of um, data processing. It will not work on row by row basis. It will aggregate and execute single instruction, multiple data. For those of you who are old like me, it's like MMX thing, AVX 512, these processor extensions. So it will process 64 to 912 rows at a time. What is Microsoft marketing call it 1,000 rows. It's a mathematical thing. So it will, st so the same operation, the same execution plan I showed you will go like start, 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 it will read up to 1,000 row will pass, sort will sort, and it's done. When we process big amounts of data, it makes a huge difference. So if you work with the SQL Server or any other platform, relational platform, you gotta be discovering what it is. Does anybody work with IBM DB2 here? Okay, the batch, in the, the batch operation on DB2, on the good old DB2, it's the same. It's a massive processing, and it can be pretty effective. So let me show how effective it can be. I can, it's, there is textual information, the slides will be published, you can read it, you know, until you fall apart. It's some references to show how it's optimized for L2 cache, but I wanted to show you some cool stuff. I mean, I think it's cool. Where you can see if it all works with the batch execution mode or not in the execution plan. So I wanted to get here, actually. Okay, so if I take, you know, this is this is machine, I mean, I gave two cores to my virtual machine on this Mac. It's nothing special. So if I take here and I say select count star from DB of fact on line sales table. Okay, so how many rows do I have there? Let's find it out. If I have uh, more than one million rows, how many minutes will it take? No, no minutes. How many seconds will it take? 10 seconds? Who believes in 10 seconds? Five seconds. Four. Three. Three, okay. Two. One. Who believes that it will take less than a second? Hey, incredible. Okay, good. So I'll run it, and I'll tell you it was 12.6 million rows. It took me less than a second, right? Is it cool? Yes, no, maybe? Good. So let's see how much time does it take to do the count. Uh, I or not, it's time, just run it. And it took me, do you want to zoom it? Can you see it, right? Is it a fake? 
4 milliseconds, 12.6 million rolls. Is it good? No? Is it big data? Who has more rolls than 12 million rolls in their tables? Who has more than 50 million rolls? Who has more than 100 million rolls? Who has more than 1 billion rolls? Who has more than 20 billion rolls? So, because you raise your hand, it looks like 1 billion is not, but 20 billion, yeah. Okay, 50 billions? No. Okay. I have a demo for that. So, the thing is with the batch mode, it's just a very advanced, inc incredibly fast way of processing data. And the way it's implemented, it doesn't really matter if your data is normalized, like in a lot of tables, which sucks for you developers because you have to put the data, you think about the normalization and so on, or it doesn't care and it will be optimized when processing one table. So, let's see if it's a, a working demo. I'll take some of the, who knows what a TPC H is. Okay, a couple of people. So TPC H is basically um, transaction processing, um, what, what, what is it called? Transaction processing, like uh, it's, it's a type of measuring the performance of different databases. Doesn't really matter if they're relational, objective, classic, or whatever. It's just like you implement this certain schema, which is publicly available, you generate some data, you run your queries. And this is how, you know, all times, all producers of the databases measure their performance. So I will run here this query. It takes me, what, one second, right? Uh, not this, of course I don't have this. So it takes me one second, right? You can see this. Can you guess how much data I have within? So it's a pretty, it's not pretty complicated, but it's a, it's a reasonable query. It's just one table, just doing some aggregation. Can you guess how big is the database? What is the factor of TPCH I have here? Because we're talking about the big data. So I put one terabyte. It's one terabyte TPCH, and this is the amount of time it takes to, to run this query, right? So you do not have to extract the data. It doesn't take me, so I can even go and see the execution plan. It takes more time. Yeah, it's, I mean, there are two things happens. First of all, I run in parallelism. These are all, I mean, I'm running it with all eight cores, because this is a virtual mach machine on Azure. So with eight cores, one terabyte uh, scale factor. Um, and do you see this warning sign on the index scan? I did something bad to prove a point. I disabled all statistics. So the query would not run too fast. So it's, it's not the fastest execution. One terabyte under one second. Not bad? Good. It doesn't mean that every query will run fast. And those of you who are using, so this is a pretty ugly query. I would not write it, there are some problems with the data types. How much time it will take? It might take just around 20 seconds. And I'm here doing multiple joins, I'm doing um, grouping, it just, um, I have here tables, multiple tables, and it will process this data. It will process this data and hopefully in one second, ah, good. It will deliver me a result. You, you, can, you can calculate what is this number, how many billions or whatever, gazillions it is. Okay? Another example. And these are the other queries you can run. So this one is not, not very bad, right? You have exist, not exist. You would argue for some of the reasons. So I'll run the query. How much time it takes? Well, it took me under two seconds. It's easy. What happened if I would not use this batch execution mode? It would go for minutes. It would go, go for a large minutes. And that's the difference when you are not using, right now the column store indexes, in the next version of the SQL Server it will function for the role store, traditional indexes as well. It will determine automatically if it's needed and will switch on. So you can run huge amounts of 
process huge amounts of data on the good old relational platform. And don't take it just the SQL Server can. Most of your relational databases, they have changed their game. Changed a lot of time, they didn't announce it well, they doing processing on the different scale, completely different scale. So I have like three minutes, good. I have had a very big demo. I set up a couple of databases and I just show you. So I have a small data, it's 32 rows, that's fast. More small data, one kilobyte, uh, 1,000, 1 million, right? Okay. Let's say I wanted to load 80, but I stopped to 8, so it was 86 million. That's running and counting, really counting. There is no pre-saved aggregation. There is no persistent views with the value. It does in milliseconds counting, doing counting operation on 86 million rows. Almost 86. So I said like, let's go for billion, right? How many seconds will it take to do a count on billion? Let's, oh. I'm sorry, it's not one billion, it's 1.5 billion, but you know, 50% more, 50% less, who cares, right? It's 1.5 billion, really. I, I can, I mean, just, I can do this like, this will be the thousands, this will be the, um, why, it's not kilobytes, I'm too used to kilobytes. Um, so thousand, millions, billion. About right, correct? Pumba, 1.5, okay? So for humans to understand this should be like a human readable number. I can do, the ca I can do all this fancy re regular stuff within milliseconds, right? Um, so you can run like distinct counts, aggregation. It will not be the same because it has to return a lot of values, but it's still fast. You can see it, it, it does one 0.5 billion rows. It's that easy, right? So, of course you need to install some open source. I mean, I love open source, but it just, open source is not the um, alternative for the solution. And then I'm like, so, no, this one is, I didn't want it, this, so, we went into one billion rows, but there was like, somebody had like 20, more than 20 billion rows, right? So let's run a query, uh, set no count on. This basically uh, just tune it up a little bit, and I will do basic count. Bio, uh, and I need to pick up the name of the table. It's big data, yeah, exactly. It takes some time. Ah! What happened? I have to count big, actually. There is a count big <laughs> operation. <laughs> it's because it's more than 2.5 billion rows. Good, oh, it took me uh, three seconds. Let's run it again. One, two, three, three seconds. How many rows? Please believe me, it's 50 billion. Do you know how much time I spent generating this data randomly? Under two hours. This is why 1.5 billion, I, I was just like distracted and I wanted just one billion rows and just like, hey, 1.5, I will not delete the data, I don't care. So 50 billion rows, right? So I'm over the time and I just wanted to present you something, this. It's called gazillion row table. It's one trillion row table and it works on eight cores on the relational data platform. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions in satisfactions? I'm still here, you can still kick my ass. Thank you, now we have time for questions. Anyone? Enjoy the coffee break. <laughs>